Hello, good day. Uh, right. We are on the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, uh, coming right into July the 5th. The first reading, Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. God challenges the rebelliousness of his people by sending them a prophet to speak God's mind to them. It's a, a, a challenge really is a way of saying our strength against your strength. You are strong, but we, we are strong too. That idea of the people's strength versus God's strength will be repeated. In the Gospel, the Gospel from Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 6a, Jesus goes back to his own native place uh, with his disciples. He began to teach, and many who heard him were astonished. Astonished in a negative sense. Where did this man get all this? In his native place, people who knew him well because they saw him grow up refused to accept this great change in his persona, his personal image that he now projected as a miracle-working messiah. They rejected his claim to be a prophet. They're really saying, we know who you are, you are not a prophet. They're, we know, they're basically they're saying in terms of uh, the religion, their, their, their sense of faith, is they're saying, we know what God does, and God does not do this kind of thing. Despite the fact we understand that you do, and we see you do, mighty deeds. We still don't think you are a prophet. We reject your status as prophet. Simply because we feel we know who you are because we saw you grow up. And our minds are set, and that's that. That obstinance that is evident in the first reading from the Old Testament is evident here, very evident here. People are locked into what they think, and they simply say to God, we are not going to change. Uh, we have our minds made up. That's that. In the epistle reading, uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. Brothers and sisters, the I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Paul had spectacular special spiritual uh, experiences, unique spiritual experiences. He doesn't really uh, go into them except that he says he was cold out of the body, perhaps, and, and they were... Uh, very abnormal, uh, but he had them. But because he had those very special, unique spiritual experiences, they could have easily have made him feel far superior to other people. That's the point he's making. But God gave him a thorn in the flesh. Now, Paul never specifies what, he's, what he means by that. Uh, difficulties, in other words, some kind of uh, severe difficulties. And he has to go begging back to God to be relieved of that. And God, what God says to him is that, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. In his sufferings, he is kept from feeling lifted above others, because he's only you know, rather dejected by by his uh, this thorn in the flesh. This idea of power made perfect in weakness. 
I would rather, Paul says, writes, I would rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ might dwell in me. In other words, God's strength is true strength. If, if I'm depending on my strength, I'm depending on something that's here today and gone tomorrow. That's not strength. That, that's uh, something that depends on when, when the sun rises and the sun sets. Here it is and then it's gone. What kind of strength is that? At the very end there he says, when I am weak, then I am strong. In other words, when I live in my weakness, but in God's strength, then I'm truly strong. The strength that I'm depending upon is a strength that's always going to be there and will not be something that's uh, somewhat here and later it's not here at all. Just to extend that a little bit, uh, in our own normal human lives, my own, our own personal strengths are really our weaknesses because we can become very dependent on our own strengths. Put faith, in other words, in our strengths. Uh, there are they were given to us in our natural lives. And, um, gee, they're, they're really handy. We're good at certain things. And we're capable. God gave us the cap those capabilities. Then after a while, we just become dependent on ourselves. Not on God, not on anyone else, dependent on our own selves. But eventually, at last, at some point or another, those strengths will abandon us. Where I rely most on me, there I am most vulnerable and weak. God's strength is a strength that never abandons me. My strength here today, going tomorrow. Dear Lord, may I put my confidence, my, uh, my own personal pr uh, life in your hands and not in my own. God bless you all.